This diagonal woven pattern is relatively easy to make. I do suggest that you follow along with the values that I'm going to be using. The significant thing about this pattern is that the actual pattern swatches a diagonal, so it's going to work on sites like Spoonflower. On Spoonflower, you cannot rotate patterns, so if you're going to create a diagonal pattern, it has to be embedded in the pattern swatch itself. So there's a significant difference between this and a regular woven pattern. So I'm going to click on New File. I'm going to create a document that is 700 pixels by 700 pixels. As I said, it's pretty important to at least the first time follow along with my values. These values don't matter. It's a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. I'm using RGB color. I have a white background. I'll click Create. I'm going to make some shapes. So I'm going to the rectangle tool here. I'm going to set it to shape. There are three options up here. You want the shape option. I'm going to have a fill and I'm going to have no stroke at all. I'm going to click in the document and I'm going to create a shape that is less wide than this document because we want some space between our elements. So I'm going to set it to 500 to be 500 wide. And for the height, I'm using an even number. This is going to work better with even numbers for everything. So I'm going to make it 26 and click OK. I'm going to center this shape up in the document. So with it selected, I'm going up here to these options, make sure it's set to canvas. And I'm going to click here on the center vertical and center horizontal. If you need to, just click them twice in case they don't go the first time. And then we're going to make a duplicate of this. So right click on this layer and choose duplicate layer. Click OK. We're going to move this, but we're going to do it using the transform tool. So I'll hold down the control key, command on a Mac, and press the letter T for transform on your keyboard. And that's going to get you these transform options up here. What we want to do is to set the middle of these nine boxes. Now the nine boxes can be displayed by just clicking on this checkbox. And you're going to set the top middle one of these nine boxes. And then you're going to set its Y value here to 383. That's just moving this shape down 20 pixels. I've just done the math for you. I'll click the check mark. So now we've got our two rectangles. These are both shapes. We're going to select both layers, click on one, shift click on the other. right click and choose Merge Shapes. So that merges these two shapes into a layer by themselves. So they're going to travel as one object. Now you'll notice that if I have this layer selected and go up here to these options, while I can select Canvas, I can't select these alignment options. But if I select over both of these shapes and go up here, then I can select the alignment options. The problem is that I'm going to smoosh these together. So that's not what I want to do. So let's go and reselect these shapes. Let's make sure that this is set to canvas. And then we're going over here to the layer options and we're going to choose a line and we're going to do vertical centers and then layer a line and we can do horizontal centers. So that makes sure that this shape, this combined element is actually set to the middle of the document. Now, this we want to rotate and use to make our pattern. But before we do that, let's make it into a smart object because that's going to allow us to edit it later on. So I'm going to right click here and choose Convert to Smart Object. Then I'm going to make a duplicate of it. So I'll right click and choose Duplicate Layer. I'm going to the Properties panel and for this first layer, this one here, over here in the Properties panel, I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. And I'm going to the second one and I'm going to rotate that 135 degrees. The net result is that these are going in different directions. At this point, I need to take one of these collections of shapes and break them up into the corners of the document. So what I'm going to do is make two copies of this topmost one. Just right click and choose duplicate layer. And then I'm going to apply an offset filter to the topmost one, filter, other, and then offset. Now for this, I'm going to use two positive values and the number is going to be half the width and half the height of the document. Now the document was square and it was 700 pixels. So half of 700 is 350. So I'm setting the horizontal and vertical to plus 350. I've got wrap around set down here. I'll click OK. 
Now we'll go to the second one, do exactly the same thing, but this time we're going to use minus 350. Filter, other, offset, and up here we're going to make this minus, and we're going to make this one minus as well. And so the end results should be that you see elements in all four corners of the screen. Now you can tuck these smart filters away because we don't need those any longer. We don't need to see them. They're not going to be altered. This is a seamless repeating pattern. So we'll go to edit and then define pattern. Note that this is pattern 89 and click OK. To test it, we'll choose file new. I'm going to open a much larger document. This one's 3600 by 3600 pixels. Layer, new fill layer pattern and click OK. I'll click the down pointing arrow here and the very last pattern in the document is my repeating pattern. And you can see that applied to the document without any rotation at all, we've got an angled woven style pattern. But this one is fully editable too. So let's go back to this original and let's double click on the rectangle to open up our embedded smart object. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is hold down the Alt and the Shift key and just drag this up. I want to enlarge it. I'm just looking at the height and it is an even number. So it's 150 pixels. That's perfect for me. This is centered in the middle of the document, but you can see that we're missing bits of it because I've gone over the edge of the artboard area that we've got here for our smart object. Well, you can solve that by choosing up here, image and then reveal all, because that makes the artboard bigger, our smart object bigger, so that we can actually see the entire contents. That's important, otherwise we wouldn't see the change in our document. I'm going to close this down and I'm always going to say yes to saving the smart object. And back in this document, you can see that now our design is much thicker. And again, this is a seamless repeating pattern. Edit, define pattern. This is pattern 90. Let's go back into this document. Let's go back into our patterns and we'll choose the very last pattern. And here is our now thicker version. Now, at any stage, you can go back in and I would suggest that you save this document because it's already set up for you. You can go back in and edit your smart object. So for example, you could change the color of this. Let's just make it pink. I'm going to close it, save it. Now we've got a pink version of the pattern. So this setup, very simple to do, very easy to edit once you've made it. Very nice little diagonal pattern made in Photoshop. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.